Hi there and congratulations. It's second semester. We're starting chapter seven today. And when I say congratulations, I mean that. Um, again, I know I've said this in class. When I went to school, when your parents went to school, algebra wasn't a requirement for all of us in our freshman year. So I know that this class can be demanding of you. Um, if math's not easy for you, like I said, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, heck, five years ago, you could have taken an easier class. The state doesn't allow that. So I know um, it's for some of you, you had to work your tail off to get whatever you get. And I appreciate that, and you deserve credit for that. So again, good job um, getting through first semester. And now we're to second semester, and now we're on the downhill side. So that should make you feel good about where you're at. We're starting chapter seven today. And this is called Systems of Equations and Inequalities. And the first thing we need to do again is we got to get some basic vocabulary down. Um, let's talk about this word system and what does that mean first before we even get into our section. What is a system of equations? Let's start there. What does it mean to have a system? And a system is the following. It's when you have two or more, and I better underline this, it's when you have two or more linear equations with the same variables. All right. So that's the first thing. That's what a system is. Now, um, now remember, linear, when you hear the word linear, linear means straight line. So linear systems, remember, linear equations could be in slope-intercept form. They could be in standard form. Those are probably typically the two forms you would see most when we talk about linear equations and we're talking about a system, we're probably talking about these two forms. Uh, we might see point slope, but it'd probably be easier to work with one of these two forms. Remember, a system is when we have two equations, two, two or more linear equations with the same variables. Uh, here would be an example of a system of equations right here. And you can see they're both in standard form, like x plus 2y equals 7 and 3x minus 2y equals 5. This is a system. It's two linear equations. They have the same variables. That's a system. Okay. What does it mean to find a solution to a system of equations? What does it mean to find a solution to the system? And it means the following. It means you're trying to find an ordered pair which will be solutions to both equations at the same time. And maybe I should underline both, okay? It's got to be a solution to both. So I have an example here of something that would be incorrect. Like 7, 0. If you look at 7, 0, if you plug in a 7 here and a 0 here, this works. 7 plus 0 does equal 7. But here's the problem. If you plug in 7 here and you plug in 0 here, you get 21 minus 0. That doesn't equal 5. This point is not a solution to the system. Okay, to be a solution to the system, the point has to satisfy both equations, and this point doesn't. Um, here would be a point that is a solution to this system right here, 3, 2. Because if you plug in 3 here and 2 here, you get 3 plus, well, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 plus 4 is 7. And if you plug in 3 and 2 here, you get 9 minus 4, which is 5. So here would be a solution to the system. This point satisfies both equations. So that's what it means to find a solution to a system of equations. OK, now, this next thing. This would be great for my, for my video audit. There are three ways to find a solution to a system of equations. And here they are. Graphing, that's what we're going to learn today in Section 7.1. We can solve a system of equations by graphing. We can also learn by substitution. That's what you're going to learn in the next section, so a method called substitution. And then in the next two sections after that, we're going to use a process called elimination. So there's three ways to find a solution to a system, graphing, substitution, elimination. We're going to concentrate on graphing today. Solu in, I'm sorry, in section 7.1 through 7.4, the first half of the chapter, we will be working with what's called consistent independent systems. That sounds really complicated. It's not. A consistent independent system would be a system of equations. That would be two equations or more 
that will only give you one solution. For example, when I showed you the previous slide, this system only has one solution. The point 0.32 is what satisfies both of these equations at the same time. Okay, in the first half of chapter 7, we're going to work with consistent independent systems, with, which means each of the systems you solve will only have one solution to it. Now, as we move on in the chapter later on, we will find solutions that might have no solution or infinitely many solutions. If you look at the bottom of page 427 in the book, there's a paragraph on the very bottom of the page that's talking about what I'm talking about, okay? We're only working with systems that have one solution, and that's what this is telling us. Okay, so how do you solve a system of equations by graphing? It's very simple to solve a system by graphing, okay? Here's what we need to do. We need to, let me get these layers on. We need to, first of all, graph each equation on the same xy axis. Now, remember, when we have a, this, this is a chapter on systems of linear. Remember, linear is straight line. When you graph each equation, remember, that means you'll have two lines on the same graph. That's what this is going to do. It's going to create two lines on the same graph paper. You're going to find the point where those two lines intersect, where the two lines Remember, intersect means cross at or touch each other. And that point is the solution. You're going to take that point, plug it in each equation to check it, make sure it satisfies each equation. So it's a very simple three-step process. Graph each line, find the point where the lines meet. That's the point that ought to be a solution. Check it. Now, a couple little things here that we should be careful about little tips. First of all, don't try to change your scale on your graph paper if possible because we have to be very precise with these graphs. If our line is off, our point of intersection is going to be off and it's not going to give you the right solution. So you want to try to keep your scale on your graph of one to one if possible. And then I would suggest using slope-intercept form when you do these problems because most of the time you can use your calculator that will allow you to make a table and will allow you to get exact points on your graph paper and that will help you get the line perfectly drawn which is going to keep your point of intersection um, true or pure. Remember, if your lines are off even a little bit, and I'm going to show you this in the upcoming slides here on my video, if your line is off even a tad bit, it's going to throw your point of intersection off and then you're going to be frustrated because these aren't working out right and it's just because we're not drawing good lines, okay? I'm going to show you an example of that right now. Let's go to number 18. And in question number 18 in the book work, I'm on page, by the way, I'm on page 431 right now. So I'll write that on the slide here. We are right now on page 431. Problem 18. The directions are to solve the linear system by graphing, and I want to check my solution. Okay, so first of all, let me show you why we don't necessarily want to solve these in methods other than slope-intercept form. And I know slope-intercept form is a little bit inconvenient because we've got to solve for y, but look at what happens if, for example, I just use the intercepts. The intercepts are easy to find. Remember the y-intercept, if you plug in 0 for x, if you cover up x, negative 3y would equal negative 1, which means y is a third. And then if you cover up y, you make y 0, then x would have to be negative half. Well, here's the problem. To graph 0, 1 third, you've got to kind of guess at where a third is. And to graph negative half 0, you've got to kind of guess where negative half is. So here's the problem. Is this line actually the perfect line for that? And the answer is I'm not really sure. So what I'm going to do right now is solve for y. I'll solve for y. Take away 2x from each side. Divide everything by negative 3. Remember, break this into separate fractions. Negative 1 over negative 3 is positive 1 third, and negative 2 third over negative 3 is positive 2 thirds. There's my exact... Right there is my exact um, line, 
And now I can actually plug this in my calculator. Maybe I should do that real quick. In fact, I will. Let me plug this in my calculator so you can see that. Let me turn my calculator on. Take a second for this thing to pop up. And I want to and I want to graph or I want to type in, remember, y Let me get that up here. I want to type this in. Remember, I wanted to type in y equals one third plus two thirds x. Let me do that real quick. Um, y, let me clear this. Y equals, remember, use parentheses around your fractions, one third plus two thirds x. And here's why it's great to do that, because now I can make a table and I can get exact points off the table that I can plot. Like here would be some exact points to make sure I have this line perfectly done. Like here are some, oh, as soon as this stops, I hit my button way too many times and now my thing won't stop here. <laughs> I'm going to pause the video until this, oh, now it just stopped, way up at 42. Well, I didn't want to go that far. Okay, let me get down to where I want to be here. Sorry about the delay. Okay, here are some points that would be easy to graph. Like 1, 1, 4, 3, 7, 5. See, my calculator is giving me great points to graph that I can actually plot. And now when I go back to my graph paper and I actually plot those points, do you see how my initial line that I drew is a little off? from the actual line when I use the point 1, 1, and 4, 3. My lines are a little different. You can see that here. If my line's off by even a little bit, it can screw things up. So now I took 5x plus 2y equals 26. I solved for y. You can see that here. I put this in my calculator, and when I put y equals 13 minus 5 has x in my calculator, it gave me two points. It gave me 4, 3, and two way to give me more than that, obviously, but those two points I can use. And here's my point of intersection right here. It's 4, 3. It looks like the solution to this is 4, 3. Let me check. If I plug in 4 and I plug in 3 here, I get 8 minus 9, which is negative 1. That works. And if I plug in a 4 here, I get 20. If I plug in 3 here, I get 6. 20 plus 6 is 26. That works. So. I hope it makes sense why it's great if you can solve these for y because you can put them in your calculator. You can make a table and get the exact points you need so your line is perfectly drawn, which will help keep you from having the headache of having two lines that are not well drawn and it's not working out. Here's another example. I'll solve the first equation for y and I'll put that in my calculator. When I put this in my calculator, I made a table, and my table had points that were 6, 1, 7, negative 5, and I graphed them. There's my line for this. And then I solved my second equation. Okay? I solved my second equation. Um, I solved for y. I took away 4x from each side, which got me to here, and then I divided everything by 2, which got me to here. And I put that in my calculator, and it gave me the points 0, 9, 1, 7, 2, 5, 3, 3, 4, 1, and there's my second line. And you can see where my lines intersect. They intersect right here at 7, negative 5. Now, look with my red pen. Look at what would happen if my lines are just a little bit off, okay? I just drew these a little off just to show you. Look at if they're a little off, all of a sudden, you're like, okay, what, what point is this? And when you try this point and you plug it back in your equations, it's not going to work, and then you're like, what the heck? I don't know what the deal is, okay? So you, I would highly suggest if you solve each of these equations for y first, that will allow you to put them in your calculator. It will allow you to make a table, and that table will give you exact points. It's going to help you get these lines drawn perfectly, so when they intersect, you're going to get that proper intersection point. Just do a couple more examples real quick. Here's number 26, same directions. Let's solve for y first. So I'm going to add 1.6 to each side. This is kind of hard to read. This is a plus here. I didn't have a plus. Let me just fill it in so it looks better. That is a plus 1.6, not a minus. Okay, so I get to here. 
I divide everything by negative 3.2, change the signs, there's my line, I can put that in my calculator and it's giving me these points. Okay? And I can plot those points. In fact, it even gave me points, uh, well, like here it would even be better, 1, 7, 3, 6, 5, 5, those would all be on my table, 7, 4, okay? So there are points from this line. And then my second line, 2x, 2.6x plus 2.6y equals 26. Actually, I was able to get away with uh, using intercepts for this because the intercepts were nice. If you plug in 0 for x, y is 10. 2.6 times 10 is 26. And if you plug in, remember, if you plug in 0 for y, x is 10. So that will give you the point 10, 0. Well, those points were easy to plot. You can see I did. Those are two perfect points. I graphed it, and you can see 5, 5 is my intersection point. Okay? So I hope this is making sense. This is not a hard section, but the thing you've got to be very careful about is when you graph these lines, we can't be real slipshod about it. You've got to get these points well done. That's why I'm saying if you, put it in your, if you solve for y and you put it in your calculator and make a table, you're going to get several points. You're going to get a well-drawn line. It's going to make it easy to get these to intersect right. And then you're not going to have the frustration of, well, my lines are intersecting, but the points aren't right. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, we can go over that in class tomorrow.